Hi, and welcome to this Noodle tutorial. My name is Johan, and in this second video of the task list tutorial, we'll connect the UI we built in the first part to a Noodle backend. In addition to learning how to set up a backend, we will learn how to retrieve data and to display data in our Noodle app using the most common Noodle data nodes. All right, so now we have a nice UI for our app, but we need somewhere to save all the tasks that we're gonna be creating. And this is where the backend comes in. Before we build out the rest of our task list app, let's have a quick look at the Noodle backend and the different data nodes that we'll be using in the rest of this video. Right now I'm showing you the finished app and we'll soon go through all the steps to create our own backend. But if we click here and then on the dashboard button, we can see what the finished backend will look like. A backend is really just a database. If you've worked with databases before, you know that a database can have many different tables to store different kinds of data. In Noodle's backend, the tables are called classes. And in this backend, you can see that I have three classes. I will show you exactly how the task class here was created in just a minute or so. But we can see that right now the task class already contains some data. Five rows of data to be exact. Now let's have a look at the different data nodes in Noodle. I'm bringing up the node picker by right clicking in my node editor. And here under the read and write data section, we will find the nodes that we'll be using. We'll talk about the repeater nodes soon. And here in the cloud data section are the other nodes that we will be using. For now, let's just have a closer look at the record node. A record node represents one row of data from a specific class. So if I try and connect the record node to this example UI, we can see that it doesn't actually have any of the data from the rows in the task class. If I want this record node to have a row of data from the task class, I need to tell the node to look at the task class like this. If we try and make a connection again, we can see that the record node now knows about the different columns from the task class, like the description and done. So let me make a few connections here from the records node to the different text nodes. But if I look at my UI here, I still don't see the data from the backend. Remember how a record node represents a specific row from the task class. We need to tell it which specific row it should be by providing it with an ID. So if I go back to the dashboard and copy this ID and put it into a string node and then connect that to the record node, Now we can see the data from this particular row in our UI. Okay, now let's see how we enable the backend and create that task class and start filling it with data. Let's click up here to enable backends for this project. We can see that there are already two other backends in this workspace and all backends are shared in the same workspace between projects. But let's create a new backend for this app and give it a name and a description. And then let's open the dashboard. Okay, so here in the Noodle backend dashboard, I can create a new class. So let's do that and give it the name task. Every task should have a description and it should also keep track of if it's done or not. So first let's add a column for our description. We'll make it a string Then we'll add another column that we will call done and that will be a boolean. Let's set the done field to false as a default since we will assume that we will only add tasks that still need to be completed. 
That's it. Now we're ready to start adding records to this class from the UI that we've created and to start displaying the data that we'll be storing here in the backend. Let's start with adding the capability to add a new task to this class. So let's go to our add task component. We'll get our task description from the text input. So it's here that we want to interact with the backend somehow. We want to create a new record in the backend. So let's bring up the node picker and start typing create. And there is the node I want, the create new record node. Let's add that. If we look at the properties of this node, we see that we can select what class it should insert a new record to. So let's click the drop down, and here we're presented with the task class that we just created. Now we can see that the create new record node has two new inputs, the description and the done input. This is great. Now we can make a connection from the text input and its text property to the description property of the create new record node. Let's also connect the on enter signal from the text input to the do property so that we actually insert the record when we hit the enter key. I'm also going to connect the buttons click action to the do input so that we can also use the button to add a new record. I think it would be super cool if the text input field would clear the text that I had put in and that it maintained focus after I hit the enter key and the record was saved. So let's use the success signal from the create new record node to achieve this. The success signal will be sent once a record is successfully created in the database. We also have signals for errors, but I'm not going to cover error handling in this tutorial. So let's connect the success signal from the create new record node to the clear action and to the focus action of the text input. Now I want to test it. So I'm going to type in a description. This is my first task and hit enter. Did you notice how Noodle shows you how the signals and data flows between the connections? If you didn't, go back three seconds in the video and have a look at the connections there. Let's have a look at the backend dashboard now. I'm going to refresh it and look, there's that record I just created from my UI. Very cool. All right, so now that we can add more tasks to the backend, let's work on displaying all the records that are in the backend. Before we get into how we can get all of the records from the backend and how we can display them, let's add a few more tasks or records to the backend. To dynamically create components based on data from the backend or from a Noodle array or maybe from some JSON file or CSV, we need to use a repeater node. Back in my app component, I'm going to just delete these list items, and then I'm going to add a repeater node into this content group. Before we continue, let's talk a little bit about the repeater node and how it works with the backend. So as we know, we have our data saved in a class in the Noodle backend. We need a way to get that data to our Noodle app, and that's where we will be using a query records node. The query records node can execute a query on a backend class to get all the records from that class, or it can use a filter to only get some of the records from the class. Now that our query records node contains a set or collection of records, we often want to display them in our UI. And this is where we will use the repeater node. As the image shows, we give the collection of records from the query records node to the repeater node. The repeater node will now go through each record and generate a specific component for each record it has. We tell the repeater node which component it should use, in our case it will be the task item, and because the repeater node generates each task item, the repeater node can supply each task item with the ID of a specific record, 
and we'll see how that is done in the records node properties very soon. This is a tricky concept, so let's see how all of this is done practically to hopefully crystallize this a bit. A repeater node will, as I mentioned, take a set of items or data or records and generate noodle components for each record that's in the set that you give the node. So we need to tell the repeater node which component it should create for each record in the backend. So let's pick the task item as the template for the repeater node. The repeater node needs to get its data from somewhere. And in our case, it's from the backend and the task class that we want to get the records from. To do that, we're going to use a query records node. We tell the query records node to look at the task class and the query records node has the ability to filter out specific records and then sort them in a specific order. And we will use this filter functionality a little later, but for now, I'm going to connect the items output from the query records node to the items input on the repeater node. And look at that. All of a sudden, we have as many list items in the UI as we have records in the task class. So now we see the correct amount of list items, but they don't show the correct data from the backend. Let's fix that. Let's dig into the list item. Each list item should get its data from a specific record. We have a record node, so let's add that. Okay, so a record in the class needs to be identified by an ID. If we know the ID, we can set the ID source property to explicit, and then we need to supply the ID to the record node. In our case, a repeater node is generating these task items components, and the repeater node is getting the records from our query records node. Each record has an ID, and the repeater node can supply that to our component. So if we instead set the ID source property to get from repeater, we will get the correct ID for our record node automatically when we use this component in a repeater node. We also need to tell the record node which class in the backend it should refer to, and in our case, it's the task class. Once we've done this, we can see that the record node automatically have the description and done properties. So let's hook those up. The description will go to the checkboxes label and the done property will go to the checked property of the checkbox. And look at that. Now we have the correct data displayed in each item. Awesome. Let's continue. We want to make sure that if we check one of our items, it's updated in the backend. Right now, if I check one of the tasks and then look in the backend, I see that the value has not updated. So we need a way to tell the backend that we want to update a specific property or column in a record. To do this, we're going to use the set record properties node. I'll add it here and let's make some connections. Oh, look, the set record properties node only has the do action and an input for an ID. Looks like I was getting ahead of myself here and forgot to set up the set record properties node properly. So I need to tell it which specific record I want to update. So an ID needs to be supplied. But since we're doing this in a component that will be generated from a repeater node, I'll tell it to get the ID from the repeater node. I also need to tell it to look at the task class. And now the set record properties node has two new properties, the description and done. We want to update the done property every time we interact with the checkbox. So let's connect the checked state to done and the changed signal to do. 
Now, if I interact with this item, we can see how the done value is updated in the backend. Last thing we want to do in the list item component is to make the delete button functional. To delete a record in the backend class, we need to use a delete record node. Again, we'll get the ID from the repeater, and we need to let the delete record node know that it's going to be the task class that we'll be working with. Now, to delete an item, all we need to do is connect the button's click signal to the do action on the delete record node. Let's verify that it's working by deleting an item here and checking the back end, and yes, that's working nicely. We only have one thing left to do in this version of our app, and that's to make the number in the header show the actual number of tasks that I have left to do. Let's jump into the header component and get to work. So we've already seen that a query records node will give us all the data from a specific class. We want to know how many of the records in the backend have the dumb property set to false, so let's add a filter to our query records node. I'm going to build it out using the visual filter builder. So I want to see if the done property equals false. Now the query records node will only give me the records where the done property is false. And the query records node also conveniently lets me know the number of items it outputs in the count property. So let's just connect the count property to our text node here, and then let's interact with our items and check some of them off. The query records node automatically updates as things in the backend changes. So the filter we added to the query node will work its magic and the count property will always contain the correct number. Pretty neat. And there we have it, a simple task list app with a real working backend. We've learned how to use the built-in UI nodes, how to set up a simple backend and how to use the most common data nodes to interact with the backend and to display the data in our app. I hope you found it fun and useful and thanks so much for watching. Happy noodling.